Welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine with Pick and Pay and one of the most exciting episodes we've ever done and if you need confirmation wait till you see the looks on the faces of the two gentlemen with me. This is one of the private dining rooms at Marvel, the restaurant that's currently booked up until 2027 such as its popularity, although if you phone and ask them nicely they might just squeeze you in and it's a restaurant that celebrates the cooking of David Higgs and the wine selected by Vickers Humor. Now, David is a former South African chef of the year. He's an absolute genius. He's probably, with apologies to Frankie Fredericks, Percy Montgomery, and Michelle McLean, Namibia's greatest export ever. And what he can do in a kitchen is absolute magic. Vickers, a South African sommelier of the year, a man who's got an almost supernatural understanding of wine, and together the offering they give at Marble is one that has understandably won loads of awards, plenty of fans, and really is the go-to place for a fantastic meal in Johannesburg and indeed South Africa. But I've decided to do something a little different this week and pare the food down slightly. Uh, but before I get into exactly what we're doing, uh, David Vickers, thank you for having us here at Marvel. Uh, David, a, a very quick history because we, we know you as a former South African chef of the year, you were a, a rock star down in the Winelands, you came up to Johannesburg, you cooked at the Saxon, and I ate some meals there, I never had a clue what I was eating but it was always amazing. Uh, now you've got this, and this really is the passion of David Higgs. What I love most about Marvel is to see people having a good time. You know, when it's in fine dining environments and so forth, yes, it's, it's rewarding, and it's, you know, the creations are different, and it's a, it's a completely different animal. But when people come here and, and, uh, and experience a, a bigger space with maybe a little bit more relaxed food, and, but they still get incredible service, incredible wine, and a great meal, uh, and you see the delight, you can feel it, you know, and, and, and I think that's why I, I love this so much for sure. The experience is very much food and wine. You create some extraordinary dishes. You've got a fantastic wingman here, and because your job is to take this staggeringly good food that David uh, brings out of his kitchen and make sure you find the wine that brings the best out of it. Yeah, I think that's, that's actually quite the fun part. As you know, the food that comes out of the kitchen and of the live fire is fantastic. And now it's just to match up uh, the great South African wine we have to it. Now, the job that you guys have, the fine food, the fine wine, sees you pairing great French wines with foie gras souffles and seared langoustines and all sorts of exotic and uh, often quite expensive food. I've decided to test you both with something a little different. Uh, we're all sports fans. I know you're addicted to cycling, but you watch most other sports as well, Vickers as well, uh, like to cheer on South Africa whenever they're playing anything big. And we often do that in the comfort of our homes. We have some friends around. There's usually a bra involved somewhere. But when we're sitting on the couch and we're screaming at the referee and urging on Daryl Impey to get over the finish line, whatever the space may be, there's some fundamentals we often have uh, in South Africa by way of snacks. And they're usually washed down with liters and liters of beer. What I'd like to do today is produce some quintessential South African sports viewing snacks and see what you guys can do in terms of that and some wine and see if we can find some pairings. So I nipped into my local pick and pay, I did some shopping, and I've come up with a few, and I start with one of my very favorites. It's a South African classic. Sadly, it's not on the menu yet at Marble. I'm hoping that might change. Ha ha, Willard's Flings. Now, uh, uh, yeah. Original flavor maize snack. I mean, this is just, uh, I can polish off a packet of these in about three minutes. <laughs> these are superb. There's a, a creaminess to them, a beautiful airiness to them. They just taste really good. What uh, what are we looking at, do you reckon, for uh, for flings? I think you have to open that first. <laughs> Get the nose. Right, there we go. So uh, it's a late 2019. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. Bake, not fry. Indeed. <laughs> Tartar lamb sweet. Vickers, what are you picking up there? <laughs> hmm. It's probably the most intense uh, analysis things will ever go through. South Africa's mm. best sommelier and South Africa's best chef. Look, I mean, we've got, we've got a little bit because we've pulled out a lovely selection of wines here. Mm. Um, I think that the, as you say, like the creaminess and mm. that, that cheesiness, um, maybe want something just to cut through that a little bit. I think we, we're going to do the bubbles with this. Yeah, yeah. That would work fantastically well. All right. Well, let's so send that uh, over. Le Lourdes Rosé from Franschhoek. Uh, Chardonnay Pinot Noir blend. Uh, a little bit of skin contact on the Pinot, just to give it a bit of colour. I reckon I think it's quite linger. 
Why share in the lewd now? Because once word gets out <laughs> that you can pair the lewd and fling. Mm. Right. Okay. I think this is perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus, <is> delicious. <laughs> We're allowed to disagree. Can we do it as a ambush? Can we do it as a ambush? Ambush push. Yeah. I think that would be awesome. Just serve a little bowl of flings and a glass of lewd. Delicious. I think Lelou would be delighted yeah. with this as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah. One more. Mm. Mm. Uh, so, what's also quite nice is a. Um, this is a uh, December nineteen, so it's had about a month in foil, yeah. um, just to complete the crispiness. All right, one down. I think that's a pretty good start. Mm. Flings and champagne, mm -hmm. flings and cap yeah. yeah. Oh, so I have a go to the core. All right. Yeah. Um, when I was uh, when I was at university, my uh, my housemate Andy, comes from Peter Maritzburg, so a modest palace, uh, had a couple of addictions. Chief amongst them was a South African snack that he introduced me to. I hadn't had them before growing up in Zimbabwe. Came down to university, and I was introduced to something called mm. the knickknack. <laughs> And this I'm really interested in challenge for because it's got a fairly impossible to miss flavour. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I, I, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think there might just be a little touch of tartrazine and MSG to these. Um, so there we go. Let me burst with flavour. Yeah. <laughs> MSG. A <Every laughs> little bit of saliva that's in your face. <laughs> but also irresistible. Yeah. Delicious. I think I've got a, I've got a, I've got a wine for this. Yeah. Usually when you eat knickknacks, first thing it changes color is your fingers. Yeah. yeah. And second you get these orange second particles that stuck in your in your teeth. <laughs> yeah. And you just try and hide that away from the girlfriend. So I think we're gonna maybe try and sneak uh, one of Ardi's inventions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, skin contact white, which is known as orange wine. So there let's try orange knickknacks <laughs> with some orange wine. Sounds yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> It's a skin macerated maceration pellicular vin orange. That's what it says on here. So uh, I don't know where Audi grabbed that from. It is a bit cloudy. <laughs> I think he maybe just do it through a, a normal kitchen sieve, just to make sure the flies aren't in there. But otherwise, it's all good. So you've given us the technical breakdown on this wine. Give us the technical breakdown on the knickknacks. Yeah, so the technical <coughs> um, crisp, crisp to bite. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, um, every <laughs> every sensation in your mouth has been uh, been activated. You'll be able to taste very clearly whatever you're going to be drinking with it. Yeah, you'd probably not classify this as subtle. No, no, definitely not subtle. Um, slightly cheesy, um, but absolutely and lovely. Best, but uh, yeah, and yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is probably not going to be Tim Noakes' favourite episode of Dan Really Likes Wine ever. Mmm. Oh. Yeah, it's winner. Mmm. It's got quite a nose on it. I don't agree. I think it's very sophisticated idea. <laughs> very, yeah, but it's kind of like a. It, it reminds me of a Greek lunch table. It's a. It's a loud and noisy yeah, argument, yeah, yeah. but of the very best sort. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. There we go. A sense of invention on the wine with an all-time classic. <laughs> mm. Delicious. So I think I'm single-handedly ruining your Cape Epic training here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then some South African classics. Every time you're around sports in South Africa, uh, some throw Now yes. uh, that's a uh, local butchery at my pecking and bed. Pretty good job. They've got a dedicated butcher. Big smile on her face. And uh, here we go. I'm asking about throw horse. Out of it. Mm. Oh, you know, Pino. Oh, I'm going to do Pino with this. Yeah. Mm. 
So what we're going to do with this, we're going to do the Storm Pino. Uh, this is Hannah Storm, uh, used to be winemaker at Hamilton Russell. And this is the Fiera Vineyard, so which is all on clay swirls. Some beautiful red berry flavors coming off here. You get a bit of that wet, um, wet uh, leaf, uh, umami kind of flavors coming through as well, which, I'll, which adds well to the coriander spice of the Dravos. So I think uh, we've got a match made in heaven, yeah. So uh, this whole is it's, it's a lot of fun, but it was also born out of, I watch a lot of sport. It's linked to a lot of work that I do. Yep but I also have a wine show, so I'm not really one for having 17 beers while I'm sitting watching. I'd rather open a really nice bottle of wine. Or brandies. <laughs> exactly. Brandy and Coastal are lovely with Drew Mmm, <laughs> that colour is glorious. Mm. Reminds me that the colour reminds me of drinking <laughs> Ribena growing up. <laughs> Dare I say it, with full apologies to Hannes, and as much as I love it on its own, yep. I think you do get an added dimension out of it on the back of the Definitely. Definitely. It just broadens it a little. Mm. Mm. It holds the meat quite nicely as well. Yep. Mm. Mm. And it also dispels the myth that um, a great bottle of wine can only ever be drunk with a 17 star Michelin chef's dish. I think yeah. you can as well. I remember probably one of the one of the greatest wine moments of my life was sitting on a beach with Bay Street and we cooked a, a pot of seafood and there was a bottle of Pinot Noir on ice in the water um, and we had a bottle of cab as well. I think it was a cab, it wasn't his cab, it was somebody else's cab, but also on ice. And that's the thing, the red wine when it's chilled, obviously yes, you lose the nuances and everything else, but it's not always about the nuance. Sure, red wine you get you get a different flavour, you lose some flavours, you gain others and, and it's it becomes almost refreshing. <laughs> so that was you know, it's it's the uh, I'll never forget that. It was a, it was a, just a great day in the sun with cold red wine and, and great seafood. You know? And a nice reminder that red wine and seafood are not necessarily exactly. a separate entity. Exactly. Mm. So Drovos is just about the definitive snack one has while watching sports on television in South Africa. And the number one would have to be Biltong. And again, from my local pick and pay, um, they do at almost a dangerously good price because I tend to buy more of it than I probably should. Mm, so here we go. Plunge your hand in. It's a very communal space, this. You can go down. enjoying the Sort of finish the wine, okay. Oh, you can ask Fatty one. Say, ooh, this is this. They'd say it's something I find with, with South Africans. Most South Africans have got, you know, they've got their butcher. They've got some near mythical person yeah. uh, who lives in some small suburb, and you must go to them because they make the best biltong. Yeah. And I think what it speaks to largely is that we've got some wonderful artisans in the meat world in yeah. South Africa, and that biltong is something that is made yeah. with such passion and with such skill. Yeah. Mm. And I think the beauty of biltong as well is that, you know, I like it. They call it heel fit built on. Yeah. You know, it's that yellow, yellow fat on the outside that's mm. wet on the inside. Mm. Other people like it drier, you know, mm. with less fat. And, uh, mm. and it's, it's very artisanal, you know, mm. it's a very personal thing as well. There's some spices you get these days as well. It's a sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like a, it's yeah. like a wine on its own. Yeah. All right, so you've uh, you've had a taste of it. Uh, what do you think of the Biltong? I think we, we, we basically left here was actually one wine, actually, and I think Shannon's going to pay up beautifully with this. It's the Reich's, uh, Reich's private cellar Shannon. It's a 16 vintage, so something slightly bit older. Um, and uh, I think with that bit of oiliness and fattiness that the Biltong has, um, it's got a bit of oak on it. Else it's quite mm. a nice oily kind of mouthfeel mm. you get from the Shannon. I think uh, yeah. it would work quite well. Awesome. Yeah. I'm really pleased with that because generally the, the mentality in South Africa, you'd immediately think, well, it's red meat, so we must drink red, they must have a red yeah. wine, and yet I, I often think Shannon with a, with a curry, uh, with something spicy is fantastic, and the, the fat that's on this built on, I think it's going to be a cracking. The yeah. Mm. The saltiness is for me, is that, you know, when it comes to built on, the, the, the salt and white wine has a slightly, almost mm. got a sweetness to it. Exactly, yeah, mm. I mean, I think uh, that's a nice thing about, about saltiness with wine, it just mm. helps the wine all along. Yeah. Mm. We'll actually be spending some time in uh, this part of the world. For a while. David Higgs, if you didn't know, riding his third, fourth, third, yeah. third out to Cape Epic. 
Uh, he is the fastest chef on two wheels in history. <laughs> and we'll be up in the tool back area. Mm. Uh, oh, that's right. It's delicious. Mm. It's almost got a like a, a light dessert wine yeah, yeah. nudge mm. to it. It's short dessert wine the full time. It's also quite oh. a bit of a treat. Yeah. I can imagine. After dinner with cheese and bolton, all the saltiness. Yeah? I'm picturing uh, Napoleon sitting on his island with a <laughs> bottle of Van de Constance in one hand and a kilogram of bolton in <laughs> the other. <laughs> And on chest. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that is lovely. Oh, that is beautiful. Also, it's got like a, like a candy taste you get with the bultong in there. Mm. No, really? As you said, that sweetness that. Oh, yeah. Mm. At the top end, is there a varietal in South Africa that we're doing better at the moment than Shannon Blanc? Definitely. Yeah. I think it's also getting much more water than Sauvignon Blanc. We see it in the restaurant every day. And that's a nice thing about. Uh, Nothing against Sauvignon, but Shannon just has a slightly lower acidity, which, uh, which goes well with food. I mean, most mm -hmm. of the starters we do, I always recommend a, a nice bottle of Shannon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just the bread to it. Yeah. Mm. And we can have an old bottle. It's not like Sauvignon. We have two glasses and you, you're rich to the top. Where's the Eno's, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. Oh. Ah. Mm. And uh, again, just on the, the broader subject of food and wine, they're not generally ingredients one would find in a restaurant such as this, but the pairings that have been made, every single one of them has added uh, a different dimension to what we've had to drink. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, <coughs> and talking really good wines. Mm. Yeah, every single one of these wines are, 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 are some of our, our leading wines mm. in our leading estates, from our leading estates. So, you know, we, we overthink sometimes and we overthink wine sometimes and, and what we should be doing what we shouldn't be doing we should be enjoying it I really feel strongly about this you know being dictated to about what to drink so Vickers doesn't tell someone what to drink Vickers makes suggestions do you like Shiraz do you like yeah. Cab now prefer Shiraz well then try this Shiraz it's not because it's right for the food you know it's because it's right on your palate you know that's the first and foremost thing because then you're going to enjoy it although he is a slightly intimidating figure when he recommends some wine to you I've never said that to Vickers <laughs> terrified of him. Um, I remember speaking to you uh, previously because about your biggest challenge as a sommelier and you said that it was when somebody at a table asked for some wine for their table to match their food but one person's ordered the salmon, somebody's got the <laughs> lamb chops, uh, you've got somebody afflicted by veganism uh, and then the last person has decided that actually for main course they want some ice cream and chocolate sauce and you've got to somehow find a wine that connects those very different dots. We've got the knickknacks, we've got the flings, we've got the roivos, we have got uh, the uh, the biltong. Is there a wine that can cut across all four of those? And I'm imagining if it's going to be able to do that job, it's probably going to be something that is both incredibly well made and incredibly expensive and probably quite rare. Uh, what would your suggestion be? So I think uh, uh, me and Chef usually like this wine quite a bit. Yeah. Um, it's, it's our Sunday wine. Um, it, it works well with everything, uh, whether you wake up from a hangover, over the wheat picks in the morning, it's absolutely delicious. Uh, I think, and, it's, and it's, it's quite, it's it's a bit pricey, but you get quite a bit of volume. And, yeah, uh, it's I accessible. It's accessible, definitely. I'm intrigued. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking something French here. Yeah, well, it's got no. a little French content. It's, well, it's, 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 it's a Grand Cru. It's a Grand Cru. So well, it's got a bit of a French Grand Cru. So uh, this is what we got. <laughs> Absolutely crispy, dry, premier Grand Cru. <laughs> this is our Sunday favourite. That'll go with everything. Exactly. <laughs> we got some. That'll go with the flings. Actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's nice I'll pop, turn the tap. Cheese. Uh, uh, nice serving as well. That's quite quick. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Look how easy it is. There's no corkscrew involved. No, no, no. And as they say, on a serious note, spoil is the best way to keep wine. Yeah, this box was actually bought for David's 21st birthday and he's been <laughs> drinking it in the ensuing 10 years. Woo. Give me those flings again. I'm telling you, it's going to be a bigger, <laughs> better pairing than the, what did we have? The Lelou. The Lelou. I'm telling you now. <laughs> Guaranteed. Is 
it's actually great. I knew it. <laughs> it <was good. laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Is this glorious? It's good. <laughs> well, usually my girlfriend always finishes the dipping sauce in there. <laughs> <laughs> that is a combo. Is that is sauce. delicious. This is sauce. That it is, is really good. good. It's like dipping bread in red wine. You've just seen South Africa Somalia of the year <laughs> dipping flings into a glass of box wine. Dan really likes wine, has reached a new low point. He doesn't work at Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Anymore. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh dear. Guys, that was a, a great deal of fun and uh, you. really enjoyed that. Uh, Vikas, in, in closing, uh, finding words from you as a, a sommelier on the, the art of getting food and wine right together? Look, I think it, uh, it comes down to, as Chef said, as chef said uh, don't stress too much about putting everything together. At the end of the day, enjoy the food that's in front of you and enjoy the wine that's on the table. And uh, I think that's the most important thing here at Marble as well. We have great wine, we have great food, we have a great atmosphere. So at the end of the day, it's not about always matching everything up perfectly. It's enjoy what's in front of you. Which we certainly have. Uh, David, your final thoughts? Yeah, I just uh, I think this is a perfect example of, of not taking wine too seriously. We have incredible wine. I mean, we have incredible winemakers. We have incredible people that own wine farms that are that are planting South Africa. And uh, it doesn't mean that it needs to be prepared with the best meal or crayfish or this, that, and the other. You know, you can enjoy good wine with with flints, for goodness sake. You know, and 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 really enjoy it. You know? So, yeah, don't take it too seriously. You know? it's, uh, there's enough other things to worry about. And I think that speaks perfectly to the very ethos of Dan really likes wine. A good wine's when you like, a bad wine's when you don't. And if it goes together with something, doesn't matter what it is, then you have done the job. So four terrific wines from four great estates, four wonderfully South African snacks. But pick of the lot, our gold medalist for today, it's the Overmere Grand Cru out of a box with some Willard's flings. All of them available at your local pick and pay. Dan really likes wine. We'll see you again next week. Cheers. Thank you.